Shri Nirmal 
शिवे सर्वा
Jay Srimataji, everyone. Welcome to Srimataji's birthday puja. Coming to you live from Waymaran Ashram in Queensland. We're ready to start the puja very shortly. If we can just silently meditate for a few more minutes, we will start the puja.
Let's all stand and sing Swagata Agata, Hindi 10. Swagata, 
We'll sing uh, Venati Sunie, Hindi 71. Mai si 
शुभ शांति दीजिए सब में जागे आनंद विहारी सुनिए आदि शक्ति में सुनिए आदि शक्ति में Dearest Holy Mother, we, your children of Australia, wish you a very happy birthday from our collective hearts. 101 years ago, you were so gracious as to incarnate in your resplendent form as the Divine Mother. We thank you again and again for allowing us to recognize and worship you and for giving us the eternal gift of self-knowledge through Sahaja Yoga. We join all the angels and deities on this most auspicious of occasions to sing your praises. Indeed, our hearts sing with delight as you emanate your divine loving vibrations through our collective hearts. 
you have given us the greatest gift of all, not only of self-knowledge, but the knowledge that we are loved by you, our most glorious and compassionate Divine Mother. All we can offer, dearest Srimataji, is our humble and eternal gratitude that you brought Sahaja Yoga to humanity and to each of us. Words cannot begin to describe how fortunate we feel to be allowed to recognize you and to be given the chance to bow down at your holy lotus feet. Shumataji, we love you, and by your grace, on this, your 101st birthday, we promise to continue your great work for the salvation of humanity and for our collective spiritual ascent. With all our love, forever and ever, your children of Australia. Jay Shumataji. What enthusiasm all over the world. The whole of Sydney, I think, has been dinged for their flowers. <laughs> and such nice things to say. The cards and the letters and the <clears throat> beautiful poems. The children <clears throat> are singing beautifully. Words fail <coughs> to express the feelings of such jubilation and such sincere feeling of happiness. You needed a mother to look after you care for you and to be able to transform you with lot of wisdom. <coughs> so every birthday I find that Sahaja Yogis are also expanding their hearts and realizing that they are no more drops, but they are part and parcel of the ocean. <coughs> and that the ocean itself is going to strengthen them and look after them. It's the ocean that is going to nourish them. And the same ocean is going to guide them. So the connection between a drop and an ocean has to be fully established. So the limitations of a drop have to be absolutely dissolved into the greatness of the ocean. <clears throat> With care and with nice things to say, we can improve the depth of the collectivity. And with sincere desire, to be collective. The desire to be collective has to be very sincere. So, this expanse of your being will start. The first thing is needed a sincerity to yourself. Of course, because we are coming from 
a drop status from a drop, a little limited drop from that phase. So we get engulfed again and again into those limitations. But we must see our own vision, what you will be in future, what you want to be in future. Thus the sincerity itself to the idea that you want to be collective itself will break all barriers. If you are sincere to any purpose, anything, then you forget the time, you forget the day where you forget everything, you want to achieve it, even in small things. Now this sincerity comes from where? There are two things which work out sincerity. Firstly, you must see for yourself what is Sahaja Yoga, what it has given you. It has given you realization, it has given you that wider vision, it has given you collective consciousness, it has given you thoughtless awareness and doubtless awareness. It has made a new personality out of you, like an egg becoming a bird. And now you are a bird and you cannot go back to the shell again. Once you realize what Sahaja Yoga has done for you, and also realize what you have achieved in that. That is, you have achieved the knowledge, <coughs> knowledge of Kundalini, which was a secret knowledge all these years, absolutely secret knowledge. Nobody knew about it. It was all underground. All the knowledge about Kundalini you have, very clearly, without going to any college, school, university, anywhere. Without going to any laboratories, you have experimented with it. You found out what is Kundalini. You have seen with your own eyes, you have seen the rising of the Kundalini. You have given realization to it. Already you have experienced not only the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost, but you have also experienced your own powers. Also you have seen that you have really become so much different from what you were in your knowledge of understanding things. So if your knowledge is so much with you, and that you are entitled to raise the Kundalini of others, which was not done by any great saints before, by any great seers, maharshis, all these great people who lived. Only very, very few people had this capacity to raise the Kundalini. All these years that you have got. You understand what are the chakras, and you can diagnose it, even the children can do it. Which we don't realize is something so great. At a human level, we didn't know a word about it. We never even had heard the word Kundalini. And in such a short time, you have become so knowledgeable. That's the blessing of Sahaja. So when you see this, that you have so much knowledge, and the light of your attention, how it works, and then you see so many blessings that work out, and how automatically, just without doing anything, you achieve results, you are amazed. And you can't understand how it has happened, how it has worked out. Suddenly I was there, this happened. 
Suddenly I was there, that happened. How? This ocean is every moment into all details working out things. All these happenings should open your eyes to the fact that you are no more like an ordinary human being, that you are sages now, that you are saints. So our attitude has to be changed. So many human beings are still animals. You can see the way they are killing, the way they are behaving. They are not even human beings. We live with them. We see them every day. They are criminals and not only that, but they have very low level of uh, culture in them. We can easily call them as animals. Then we have some human beings who are half animals and half human beings. Then we have some human beings who are really human beings, who are seekers. Kudayun Vasa, let them come forward if they want. Kudayun Vasa. <coughs> and this understanding of what you have achieved in Sahaja Yoga should immediately make you realize what you are. And when it all has happened to us, automatically you should be very sincere about it. You must feel that something really we have achieved is something so great. So we have to be sincere Mentally also, you should feel that way. So this is first thing you do is to mentally feel, to mentally feel that it's so important, it is so, it is so important, it is so valuable. You become very sincere about it. But the second part is different. Where you see something, you know something, and you start opening your heart about it. In the second part, you have to open your heart. So the sincerity comes from an open heart. If your heart is not open, you cannot be sincere. Now what does it mean that your heart is not open? Let us see. You are born again, you have got your realization, also it is your birthday in a way. But in the growth of your knowledge and understanding, you have not kept pace with your heart. But what is the reason for that? What is it that keeps your heart like that? You can discover very easily that your heart rules the body, rules your brain, everything. Because if your heart stops, everything stops. But if your brain stops, heart won't stop. So heart is the most important thing and it governs the whole being within you. Now this special instrument which is very delicate, which circulates also, is like a stone, how will it pulsate? So when we say enlarge your heart, it means that the stoniness of your heart has to be melted away. But how does it become stony? 
we have to go to the roots of that. It becomes like a stone because the heart controls the brain. As there are seven auras on your brain, in the same way there are seven auras on your heart. And all those auras are the ones which control the auras of the brain. Now, <clears throat> on the brain, as you know, there are two institutions of ego and conditionings. We start pressing the brain too much. As a result, all these auras get pressed. So the auras which are surrounding the heart also get pressed. But brain can think Yes, this is very good, I know how to raise Kundalini, I know how to do this, everything, I know what there is. It doesn't become stony that way. It can think. Anybody who is a stone-hearted fellow can think like Hitler. So the brain does not get affected by the conditioning of the ego to such an extent that it becomes like a stone, it cannot think. If it is ego too much, just closer to the brain, will you go on falling, I'm holding it all. If it's an ego, then a person may become stupid, but he thinks, he thinks all right. He really becomes stupid. Anybody who is an egoist, uh, whose agya is catching, becomes a stupid fellow, no doubt about it. You see in his behavior, whenever he talks, the way he is trying to do anything, it's such a show off, and he becomes a stupid fellow. Any wise person can see that, that he is such a stupid man. So, what we find, that mind is covered with the superego, but it does not make a person with a brain which is stony. On the contrary, it makes a person a stupid person, not a stone-headed. And such a stupid man can go on talking all kinds of things and you can immediately recognize such a stupid man, no different. The other side of it is, is the conditionings in the mind. That's even a worse thing, very sly. Because somebody has the conditionings, he doesn't come out of it, he doesn't show off, but he's sly. And his brain is covered with such ideas which are a such. Like somebody saw me in a puja washing my hands and giving that water. He said, Why do you take the water which is washed, which is washing mother's hands? So the other one said, Mother has, has got such tremendous vibrations in her hands that when we wash them, vibrations come in. Oh, he couldn't believe it, because the conditionings are that whenever you wash your hands, only the dirt comes out, so they can't think of vibrations. All such conditionings are there in the mind of people. Because of these conditionings, they cannot take to heart. But what happens? That they think about it, in a very sly manner, tell lies, talk nonsensical things, and try to convince you that they are right. They are not stupid, but they are idiotic. They talk like idiots, and that idiotic thing you accept. There's no wisdom in it. So one fellow is a stupid fellow, another one 
is an Egypt. Between the two lies the Sahaja Yogi. So this conditioning makes the brain pervert, but it doesn't make it a stone. Only what makes it a stone is that if he is born with some sort of a mental derangement that he cannot think, otherwise the brain goes on thinking, whether with conditioning or with thinking, it goes on thinking. Such a brain should not affect the heart, because heart affects the brain. But the auras which are manifested from the heart start becoming dull or disappearing. So the auras around the heart are very sensitive and they feel no use throwing light on the brain, they start becoming smaller and smaller and that's how the heart becomes small. Because they have no purpose in life then, so they start becoming smaller and smaller. As a result, the heart becomes small. We call somebody is very small-hearted fellow, is a chicken-hearted fellow, or we always say such a man is a stone-hearted person. All this happens because of the conditionings and the ego of the human mind and the result is felt by uh, the heart becoming a stone because heart is a sensitive thing. Brain is not that sensitive. If you put something soft in the water, it becomes hard. But if you put a stone in the water and boil it, it won't. So heart being very sensitive and delicate becomes like a stone, as if boiled in the heat of the brain waves. And it becomes a very hard stone. It does not know how to say even one word which is nice. It goes on hitting people all the time, saying things which one should not have said. All the time thinking, what should we say to hurt another person? How should I try to really mislead another person? Because it's a sly attitude. The ego part, the heart becomes again frozen, with ego. And then the heart thinks, not thinks, but heart cannot emit any uh, auras to the brain. The brain starts thinking that now the area of heart is finished, the heart cannot control us anymore. Then heart starts thinking that I will do all the work myself. I mean, the head starts saying, and the heart becomes small, stony, it doesn't act. So now the brain takes over. The brain takes over and then brain start, brain starts itself acting in a manner that we can't understand. They behave like animals, they behave like satanic people, they become very cruel and they do not know how to really say something good to others. There's a kind of a very false pride in them and such people go on hurting others, insulting others till they meet another one like them and then both of them collapse. That's the only snag in the whole thing. Otherwise we would have been finished by now. But because the two persons with ego cannot be together, they neutralize each other. So thank God, we are saved from that. So these two conditionings, which actually are 
on the brain. These two conditions freeze the heart and also make the domain of heart as zero. And then the brain starts asserting itself. That is how we do not know how to be kind to others, how to be nice, how to be helpful, how to be gentle and how to be reassuring, protecting others. All this we have inherited already. We have already got a stone heart when we come to Sahaja Yoga and we have a brain either full of ego or super ego. So now with your Kundalini rising, you can clear out your head first of all. So the sincerity will come when the Kundalini will move and touch your Brahmarandra, which is the seat of your heart and will expand. Then the heart just comes back like a king, returns back and start dominating the brain. When the heart comes back, you immediately find those people with whom we are angry, we would not talk, we had nothing to do. Suddenly you become friendly with them. There's no problem. In many ways, people have harmed you. All that harming and everything just disappears. And you start becoming so nice and beautiful. What has happened that Kundalini has touched your Brahmarandra? Where is the seat of heart? And as soon as that opens out, your heart also opens and it gets awakened, it thinks, Oh, what? I have allowed this brain to rule me, how dare it rules me? It just jumps on it. And we have seen people, suddenly there is so much transform, that's remarkable. The one gentleman in America, he said that, Mother, after realization I was so much changed that I become a very mild person. And I never used to wish my uncle or anyone. So he met him in some sort of a fate and then he said, Hello, uncle. The uncle started looking at him. Are you all right? He would never say that. Then he went and saw, Are you all right, uncle? Are you keeping all right? Can I do something for you? Very nice thing, he said. Uncle said, What have you been doing? Are you drunk or what? How can you speak so sweetly to me? I can't believe it. That's what happened. And that's why we have to understand that all these things can be easily dropped out because we have acquired them. They can be finished off because we have acquired them. They need not be all our lives, our uh, relations. So, ego and super ego. Both can be blasted off once your heart is awakened. So, when we are dealing with people, we have to break the ice also by communicating with others in a very decent manner, like telling yourself, no, I don't believe that this man is so bad, let me look after him, he may be all right, I don't think he's so bad. So, to accept somebody is bad is very easy for human beings and once they start accepting such a thing, then they build up a kind of a fortress in which they live and they think they are the best people and nobody else are good. And thus the whole community, the whole society, the whole humanity gets bitten by these ideas. And Sahaja Yoga is the only way which is going to cure it. Sahaja Yoga is the only way which is going to finish this. And that part is to be prayed by you people to understand that sincerity can only come if you raise your Kundalini again and again and open your Brahmarat. Then your heart will rise. It will become a very awakened personality and it will take charge of your brain, which is all the time thinking, thinking, thinking like mad. And once that happens, 
then you will realize that now you have jumped into doubtless awareness. So the relationship between the two has to be fully understood. At first the domination of the heart, or the, we can say the kinghood of heart is challenged, is put down, brought to zero, and then this brain becomes the king and it starts ruling us. I think, I feel, means the brain, the ego, if you could give up, I think, I want, everything will be all right. You should say, I want is not the point, this body wants it. You separate yourself. Gradually you start separating yourself from all such situations by never saying, I want, you should say, this body, this hand, this head you start separating. And once you are separated, all these barriers of ego and superego will disappear. But as it is, also it's very easy to get rid of these two, very easy to get rid of these two, only by raising your Kundalini and breaking your Brahmarath. This is the greatest achievement that you have got, that you can break your Brahmarandra, make your Kundalini uh, get connected with all-pervading power. That's why I always say you must meditate and you must be in thoughtless awareness that it works out. Don't pay attention to outside things so much. Of course, you are in a way responsible for Sahaja Yoga because you are sincere about it. You cannot force yourself. So again and again I say, you weigh your sincerity. How sincere am I to Sahaja? <coughs> and some people just take it frivolously. They say, Mother, I was silly, I was confused. You cannot say that. You cannot say, because you Oh, these things to Sahaja Yoga. Everything you owe to Sahaja Yoga now. It's a new life to you. So you cannot say, I was confused or I was silly, I was stupid, I did this. You tell yourself, we can't do it. Mother has really worked very hard with full sincerity and we cannot be insincere about it. We don't want to be hypocrites. This is hypocrisy, absolute hypocrisy. You say something and do something. If you have any sense of gratitude and self-respect, then you should never say that by mistake I did this mother or I was confused, I was silly, I stupid. That shows you are a very mediocre person and you have no sense of gratitude towards Sahaja Yoga nor towards yourself. But the best part of it, that I don't need Sahaja and that Sahaja Yoga does not need you. You need Sahaja Yoga. In itself Sahaja Yoga is complete, it does not need you. It is a complete thing, will remain like that, absolutely. It will have its own position, its own status, its own dignity, everything intact. But if you have to get something out of it, you have to work it out. Like uh, from the river Ganges, if you have to fetch the water, you must have proper pitchers, which are deep enough to receive the water. But if you take a stone, what can you bring out of it? But the Ganges flows, it is what it is. It has its all capacities in it. It doesn't change because you people have taken stones. So now you have to understand that raise your Kundalini as many times as you can. Try to put attention to your Kundalini all the time, 
see where is the problem is, get it cleared out, absolutely cleared out, find out where's the problem is and raise your Kundalini many a times and see that you are flowing all right on your, on your fontanel bone area so that your heart expands. It's a mechanical process in a way, you can say that. But even that you people don't do. If you had done that, your heart would have increased. And you yourself will say, Mother, my heart has become large, like Isha. And then you see the miracle of the heart, how it emits vibrations by which you become such compassionate, such dynamic, beautiful people and so sincere to search. I would request you to open your heart today for this puja. You have been very jubilant and happy and must be your heart must have opened. Because I've seen such yogis have a very large heart for me, but for themselves they don't have. They'll do everything for me, but nothing for themselves. They'll work morning till evening to decorate the hall, to do everything. They must have sent all these flowers to me from everywhere. But if I tell them, you meditate for yourself, that they will not do. Or you achieve this for yourself, that they will not do. This is the situation. So instead of wasting all your energy for decorating all these things, you should decorate yourself within yourself. With sincerity, with nice thoughts about yourself, that you are capable, absolutely capable people. And you can use your imagination, your intelligence, rationality, whatever you think you have, to find the way, to find the way again, I say, to keep your heart large. And this is the message for today's birthday all over the world, because I felt that the whole world was today like a big heart pulsating. I, I received the last phone and came here. From all over the phones coming, flowers are showering, a beautiful, nice thing they're saying, everything is there. When I am just drenched into it, just drenched, it was too much for me. Such sweet things for the children, from the children, such things from the ladies, some very, very nice from the men and it was amazing how these people are bubbling with enjoyment that today is my birthday. In the same way, please consider that every day is your birthday, that you have to raise your Kundalini all the time and keep the standard of your Kundalini higher and higher. The more you open out, the more threats of Kundalini will come up and the more your heart will open out and it will be awakened, it will become more powerful and with an open big heart and a powerful heart, you can dominate your brain, which is giving you all these funny ideas. I hope this will happen this year here and people will try to make it a point that we have a large heart. Large heart doesn't mean stupidity, doesn't mean that. Large heart means the heart in which you can put me in. It's quite a big person, myself. So you have to have a very large heart that I could reside into your heart. That is the large heart. And that's what you all should have. If that happens, then everything will work out very well. So the surrendering part of it, you must know how to surrender and you must know how to keep whatever is not surrendered. Because you surrender yourself in such a manner that you expand your heart absolutely, put me down there and then keep your flowers with you to be given to me at a time when you are in complete control of yourself. So you have your emotions, your feelings like flowers, that you have to keep to yourself 
which are the part of the same ocean of your heart. And once you are ready, everything is done, it's the whole house is ready, now bring the flowers, the emotions, the nice things, the beautiful things, and nourish them. One must learn, I think there should be some books about how to say nice things to others. We should try to find some books like that or should write some books, how nice things could be said, how we can take care of others, how we can uh, make another feel our love, the expression of love. And that one, such a book will really help people to understand that this is nice to say. And once you say something nice to other, that niceness comes back, as I have told you, like the ripples that touch the shores come back and then you feel very happy. Go on saying things which are nice, which are pleasing, will be very much appreciated. But if you say it with sincerity, not just to tease someone or to say something, just to be so superficially good like thank you, thank you, thank you, but something from your heart as they say, then you will be surprised that the heart of the another person will open and from that heart will flow those beautiful flowers of emotion stores. So, on one side you have to expand your heart and on the other side you have to reserve or preserve all the beautiful, nice, delicate feelings within yourself, absorb from everywhere and then to pour them out at the right point. That's the art. Like these flowers were in the garden, first to begin with, preserve, preserve. At the right time they were brought in, so they feel glorified that they are used at the right time. This is the way we have to weave ourselves in our heart, because human beings are very delicate, very beautiful things, and to beautify them you have to say beautiful things. This tongue is not for saying harsh things, for making fun of others, uh, for teasing others, but it's for saying something, such a beautiful thing, that the another person also imbibes that beauty. I've seen some nice things people have said, and that lingers in my mind. And I said, when will I have a chance to say these things to others? So think about it. That now, you see, very nice sentence, huh? This was a very sweet thing they said. All right. So now, where should I use this? As I go to the shops, I see something. Ah, that's good. That will be good for a particular person. Let's buy that. In the same way, if you find these nice feelings and nice emotions and nice things said, then what do you do? You collect them, all these things, keep them and use them at the right time, at the right place. This is what is the wisdom of Sri Ganesha. Innocent people are the most sincere, innocent people. Those who are clever and cunning cannot be sincere because they enjoy their cunningness, they enjoy their uh, so-called brilliance, they can never be. Those people, who are simple, who are loving, who care for love more than anything else, can only say very nice things sincerely. Today, I want to say many things to you, how I feel about this birthday in Australia, but I told you the words fail. Because see, Australia is such a far-off country. To come here with so many people sitting and singing Agatha Swagata, it is unbelievable, unbelievable. Because I have not given you any money, you have not given me any money, you are not bound to say anything like that. 
But not only that you are doing it, but you are enjoying it. It's something great. You are enjoying it and that's what it is, that when your heart is large, then whatever you do for others, you enjoy. You enjoy doing good things, you enjoy saying nice things. So we should have choicest flowers of beautiful sayings, we should have choicest emotions which we should be able to express to each other. Now start on that. From today I have to say, you start on this, that from 1990 we are all the time going to speak something beautiful to each other all the time and just keep your ears open, keep your eyes open and wherever you get a chance, wherever you hear something like that, keep it in your mind and use it back. Today I'm so enamored and it is too much for me, really, to believe even that there are so many Sahaja Yogis in Australia which is so far away. Now it is your responsibility, it is your responsibility to be sincere about Sahaja Yogi. And in all sincerity, if you do everything, you will never think of such funny arguments which I have heard before. You will just think that we love Mother and we have together to be together and we have to love each other and all the time we have to say nice things to each other so that the love increases. Anything else, anybody who tries to say things uh, or break things or break somebody's heart are doing sinful things, that's sin. To break the heart of a saint is the greatest sin and they'll be punished for that. So now you are all saints and sages, you have to respect each other, not only that, but you have to be enjoying your sincerity, that's the way I'm trying to say, enjoy your sincerity. And all these stupid thoughts come into your head, throw it them. Because I heard of so many arguments here and there, and I thought, what is this? They are Sajogi or they are ordinary people of the street. This is happening, then the children, this happening, that. Now, about children also, I've been telling you that send your children to India. In any case, you have been selfish about them. You know they are not developing all right. So send them to India. In that, you have opened your heart because the whole world is your relation. The whole world is your family. You go anywhere in the whole world, you will find people who love you, who will care for you do everything for you. I mean, to know that in every place there is somebody sitting, just waiting to meet you as your own. Just now I was thinking, these musicians are going to Singapore, what will happen? Where will they stay? Big problem. Trying this and that. Suddenly I gave a bandha, phone came from Bala. Bala told me that, no, no it's perfectly all right, I'll tell my mother, she'll look after them. Problem solved. So any such problems, your problems can be solved because you are sincere. But if you are insincere, you'll meet only insincere people and then you'll go down. Go down into your own estimation and estimation of others. And you'll have no place in Sahaja Yoga. There's no place for insincere people in Sahaja Yoga. So try to develop your sincerity, raise your Kundalini as many times as you can. Keep it there, keep it on Sahasrana and see that your heart opens. That's the best way. They have been all asking me how to open our heart. I said, take the key. No, I don't know how to tell them. Open your heart means just reach your Kundalini, keep to the Brahmarandra and see that the Brahmarandra opens. Not only that, but you see how by expanding your heart, by being nice to others, how you feel. There are some people who do not talk much, who do not uh, meet others, who have reservations, they live as if they are living in the air, sort of people, must know there must be some badas, some booths sitting on their heads, otherwise that's a very unnatural behavior for a surgeon. I've told you so many things today because I think the care 
the love, the affection, the wisdom, and the patience is to be imbibed. If I am your guru, if I am your mother, you have to imbibe these qualities. For everything I am worried. If somebody is in trouble, I am worried. I try to get uh, the problem sorted out of that person. Anyone who has a problem, I just that sticks to me uh, till I have solved the problem. And I tell frankly also about, say, your children, I'll tell your wife, about your husband, that this is not all right, this must be correct. Because I care for you. This is what should be your attitude towards Sahaja Yogis, Sahaja Yoga. And that will strengthen you so much because you care, that's why others care. Can you imagine for an Indian woman like me, to have so many people who care for me? Why should they care for me, after all? All right, you are Sahaja Yogis. But there are people who are not Sahaja Yogis, I tell you. Whom I, they are not Sahaja Yogis whom I met from my childhood, whom I know my relations are. They all care for me, just one thing, because I care for them. I get bothered about them. Anybody who tells me a problem, it is in my head, sticks there like a stamp. Till I've solved the problem, I'll be looking out how to fix that problem. And I don't have any problem of my own. In the same way, you should not have any problems of your own, then only you can marry. All right now? So may God bless you. We'll ta now take the eleven holy names of Sri Vishnu. We'll do the short mantra. Sri Keshava. Om Sakshat Sri Keshava Namo Namaha. You are the shelter of all beings. Shri Narayana. You are the husband of the mother Shri Lakshmi, Shri Madhava. You are the protector of the cows, Sri Govinda. You are all pervading, Sri Vishnu. Vishnu 
You are the one who measured the world with three steps. Shri Trivikrama. You are the one who incarnated as a short man, Shri Vamana. You are the wielder of the divine powers, Shri Sridhara. You are the Lord of the Senses, Shri Rishikesha. You are the one that has a lotus coming out of your navel, Shri Padmanabha. You are the one who can be attained by disciplines, Shri Damodara. Could the children come up for puja, please? We'll take Sri Ganesha's mantra followed by Ganesha Tabashisha. Om Gyanamayo Vidyanamayo Si 
Sarvam Jagadidam Tvato Jayate Sarvam Jagadidam Tvatasthishati Sarvam Jagadidam Tvalilaya Mishati Sarvam Jagadidam Tvalipratyeti Tvam Bhumi Lako Nalo Nilo Nama Tvam Chatvai Vakvadami Tvam Guna Chaya Sita Tvam Deha Chaya Sita Tvam Kala Chaya Sita Tvam Mula Dhara Sityo Sinityam Tvam Shakti Chaya Maka Tvam Yogino Dhyanti Nityam Tvam Brahma Tvam Vishnu Tvam Ruta Sing, sing uh, Ganesh, Ganesha Stuti, Sanskrit 11. Yeah, 
to take a John and I was to take a John and I was to take a John. Could we have five men to come forward for puja, please? We'll sing a birthday song, Chindarara Main. Thank you. 
हम सब की रक्षा करे हम सब की रक्षा करे जन्म हुआ श्री We'll sing uh, Pawada, Marathi sing 16. Yeah. 
We'll sing English 84, sitting in the heart of the universe.
sitting in the heart of the universe. We know your love is flowing through us. Sitting in the heart of the universe, we know your love is flowing through
surrender, we are in paradise. When we surrender, we are in paradise. Sitting in the heart of the universe, we know your love is going through us. Sitting in the heart of the universe, we know your love is We know your love is flowing through us. We know your love is flowing through us. Could we have seven married ladies to come forward for puja, please? We'll sing uh, Tuja Purjani, Marathi 36. We have three more ladies, please.
Sing Hasata Ali, Marathi eleven.
Ah uh-huh. 
We'll sing in Sanskrit to Aigiri Nandini. I give in and in and it made in a wish of in or in in and in a day. Everybody will be a shiro, Jaya Jaya He Mahesha Sura Marini Ramya Kaparadini Shaila Sute Jaya Jaya He Mahesha Sura Marini Ramya Kaparadini Shaila Sute Jaya Jaya He Mahesha Sura Marini Ramya Kaparadini Shaila Sute Sura Vada Vashini Dura Dada Dashini Dura Mukha Mashini Asharate Tribhuvana Poshini Shankara Toshini Kilmisha Moshini Gosharate Danu Jami Roshini Kuta Sutta Roshini Dura Muda Shoshini Sindhu Sute Jaya Jaya He Mahisha Sura Madini Ramya Kaparadini Shaila Sute Jaya Jaya He Mahisha Sura Madini Ramya Kaparadini Shaila Sute 
जय जय हे महिषासुर रम्य कपनी शैलसुचे ऐषखंद विखंडित रुंद विचुंडित शुंद गजारिपते विभु गज गंद विदारण छंद पराक्रम शुंद मृगारिपते ंद निपाति चंद विभाति मुंद मतादिपते जय जय हे महिषासुर रम्य कपाली जय जय हे महिषासुर रम्य कपाली जय हे महिषासुर रम्य कपाली शैलसुते चंदुरुसंगनाक्षण संग परीसुत दंगन पाकतके कनकपिशंग पुषाकंग वसापत शुंग तापतुके चतुरंग बलाक्षतिरंगकतांग व्रता के जय जय हे महिषासुरमारी रंग कपारी शैलसुते जय जय हे महिषासुरमारी रंग कपारी शैलसुते जय जय हे महिषासुर रम्य कपारी शैलसुते जय जय जाप्य जय जय शब्द परास्तुति पर विश्वनुते जन जन जिंगित जिंगृत रूपुर चिंगित मोहित भूत पथे मंगल मौली मिला 
We'll sing uh, Hindi 98, Hey Niramalama.
ki devi sangeet sudase har shabd tera har geet tujhse
sing Vishva Bandita, Hindi 67. Vishvavandita Nimalamata Salva Pujita
Bhakti Pradayani Bhakti Pradayani Shubhadam Vadadam Namo Nama Thank you. 
we have eight ladies, please, for presenting gifts? We need eight ladies, please. Yeah. Eight. eight. We have a convoy of gifts to present. Uh, Monica, you can come. The Carly. <laughs> come along. Come along. You can start with this one, with Sharon. Yeah, you and Sharon can offer it. Monica. Someone else to help you. <laughs> so two ladies per, per tray. So we have um, some three beautiful crystal jugs and eight crystal glasses. Um, <laughs> if you want to show the Monica how it goes in the top. So, this, so we can offer water to mother and also without having to have a cloth, we can just um, put a little plug in the top. <laughs> so, uh, and here comes one more. One more. Come along. Auntie Coral, if you could open the painting. So we've brought one painting, an oil, oil painting from a Sarjogi in Russia who was in India. Uh, his, his wife is um, Auntie Coralie's um, Santor teacher. So he's a very, um, very fine artist. So we brought one of his paintings back. Don't have to be too dainty, ladies. It's only wrapping paper. <laughs> and then if you could just show Shumadaji first and then show the collective. So we'll need to find a home for this. There's a nice back wall space, perhaps. So we'll find a nice space for it. Thank you, everyone. Shall we say good night to the online viewers, Vibar? Is that okay? Good night to everyone who joined us online. Thank you for joining us, uh, Jay Shumadaji. I think our musicians might have something in store for us now as well. It's, it's not a practice. It's a um, what do they call it? What do they have? The yeah, it's not a rehearsal. When, when you do your first show and it's like a little practice run, <laughs> we're having one of those. <laughs> so let's. Uh, this is um, in preparation for the concert on um, coming up. So this is Dakini.